this is a civil case Matheson versus Matheson. to appear for trial and the court heard evidence and entered a entered a judgment based on the information heard at the trial. I suppose giving the defendant or given given the, the petitioners Those redundant typically if I'm pro se and filing in a motion and an affidavit, would that be redundant in a sense? Well, as a practical matter, appearing pro se, you're held in the same standard. For sure. As an attorney. Um, are you ready to proceed, Mark? Yeah, thank you, sir. Yes, Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we had a trial set earlier this month, um, and I had not received uh, any sort of notice for the time and date. And I understand the pretrial date a notice was was on there as well. So I've been following the repository um, to get my time and date stamps for set court dates and trials and hearings and things of that nature. Um, and I may have inadvertently looked at the wrong time but usually I've got a piece of paper stuck somewhere that I can look at and know what you know what wins game time and I just happened to show up two hours late I think it was actually it was for the uh, I was looking for a 2:30 appointment with the uh, a hearing and in fact it was held at 1030 if I'm not mistaken is concerned, the, the record is set with the information that my client introduced, and therefore I, I don't know that the court really could reconsider the decision based on the fact that the evidence that was introduced came in unrebutted and unchallenged and informed, so I think it is more akin to a motion to set aside. Um, Your Honor, Judge Harris spoke of these issues at the time of the hearing, spoke of the fact that the address had remained the same throughout the notices, the notices have been sent, um, that this respondent has shown up at the pre-trial conference and the trial date and time was spoken of at the pre-trial conference 
Um, and so all appropriate notices were given. Uh, I can understand inadvertence, but when it comes to trials and the amount of time and preparation that goes into it, the fact that, that, that evidence was introduced in this case means it, that this, the result uh, remains as is. Uh, Judge Harris made very sure to look and be certain that Mr. Madison received appropriate notice. And, and I know that this court can follow the same as Judge Harris did, but the address has always remained the same. The notices were sent. He did appear at pre-trial. We spoke of the trial date and the time. Um, the fact that I'm back here again is, is another financial disadvantage to my client, which is not appreciated. There's no factual basis set forth in the affidavit, so the information that comes before you is not under oath as far as factual information. And so we object on that basis. So this case boiled down to one, one issue, and it was brought up with Judge Harris. All that we requested is for the respondent to submit to a hair follicle drug test at a location of his choosing and if he tests and he comes back clean, then we would immediately start visitation. That's been an issue for a large period of months and, 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 and I'm sure the respondent can respond here, but in speaking to him, I know that he believes that somehow we have brought about a false positive in a test that he previously submitted to. It was attached to our petition and it was spoken of at the default as well. And I won't even call it a default hearing. It was the trial. Uh, he just merely failed to appear. So it really wasn't the default. We had the trial and the result was obtained. There is no default. He just wasn't present. But our concern, Your Honor, is that, that this respondent tested positive for four separate controlled substances immediately following the last trial, not this trial, the one prior to that. And a large period of months has passed in which all that we request is for him to submit to drug testing. And I think if he's under the impression somehow that I'm bringing about, my client's bringing about, that someone has it out for him and is causing him to test positive. Um, so that, that's our position is the results should stand. And even today, as in the last several months, repeatedly over and over again, we set forth that if he will submit to a hair follicle with a location of his choosing, we will even pay for it anywhere in the hospital. Advanced Drug Protection, Wine Hospital, Burley, go to Boise. We don't care. As soon as we get a clean test result, we'll begin visitation um, for the children. But that hasn't occurred, and he's refusing to test. And so we stand firm, and we, we strenuously object to, to any reconsideration. I don't think there is anything to reconsider. As far as reopening it, that doesn't accomplish anything. The mere fact that the case is reopened doesn't accomplish anything. The, the motion's improper. There's no factual basis, and Judge Harris had good reason for the order that was entered. So we, we object. Mm -hmm. Mayor Butte on that. Yeah. Um, whew. So I'm curious as to what type of evidence was heard at the last hearing. And as far as the pre I mean, Daniel lists a lot of things there. So if we want to talk about um, as far as what my intent is, my intent is to fight for my kids. That's why I showed up to the pretrial, you know, conference. That's obvious that I wanted to be there and why I wanted to follow through. If I don't get noticed and I can't obviously understand or know when the trial dates are. I understand that they were attempting to shift some things around and couldn't for my daughter's birthday. I was waiting for any sort of notice on a trial date change. Um, Daniel makes things so trivial. Um, we've been at this three years and we're talking about one, pre, one, one hearing that I, I just happened to didn't get information on and I couldn't show up to. That's completely trivializing my children's life and, and the, the distance that's been caused between uh, myself and my children from the courts. Um, it's, uh, everything has been brought, as far as evidence, is, is malafitis. I mean, everything. You want to talk about comparing, um, you know, any, anybody who does any sort of the preponderance of evidence would have seen that the form or the evidence that's brought up against me is, is void. Um, and, and if Daniel wants to make assertions as to what my opinion is, I'll make an assertion here as well, um, that he even agreed with me that these tests were a, yeah, it, these tests were, were, they looked a little fishy. They looked a little cooked. Something was incorrect. The timestamp is incorrect. That's the only thing that's incorrect, and that doesn't invalidate the, the test. That's sure. That's my position. If it confuses the evidence, if it muddles the water, what is that? What, what is evidence then? What is the whole point of, 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 of what you would argue is evidence, or a judge even looking at something that's fake? I understand. Just because I say China and Russia are sh next to each other, that doesn't make it true. Yeah, Your Honor, I just wish that um, I had proper notice because 
I'm more than happy to come and get dressed up and, and, and present my case and have to continue um, on with this uh, continuous litigation. Um, that's my rebuke to, to, his, to his information as far as what he, he believes that, that needs to occur here. And, and th there, what needs to occur is, is stare decisis. We need to go back to where there was some sort of a formal compromise where she and I could formally communicate and there wouldn't be some sort of, um, again, uh, burden on Shyla to want to wanna talk to me because I'm just this guy who's, you know, intruding on her children's well-being. May I object to that? On I'm so either, sorry. On either view of the motion, he's required to submit a pleading which sets out facts upon which the court can make a determination. No facts have been, have been presented. I just pres may I object on this. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just I didn't mean to interrupt, sir. This is totally frivolous. I'm denying the motion. And counsel, if you will submit an appropriate certificate under the rules, I'm awarding attorney fees for bringing this out. Objection. Point of clarification. So what you're stating is you, you have not complied with the rules. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I I was just got, have I haven't complied. stated any sort of clarification. I'm I'm denying the motion. The attorney's fees and costs of this particular hearing, is that what you're stating? So do you, I object, may I, may I again attempt to, to state the, the rule of law? What, where am I supposed to understand? You think Jerry's going to give me the information? I'll stand. You think Jerry's going to give me the information, yes. sir? You, you have chosen to be your own attorney. Not by choice. Says Man. You are held to the same standard as any attorney. But yet, I'm trying to, objection, point of clarification, I'm trying to state some things to you, and you keep cutting me off. And I'm trying to get an understanding, a full understanding, clarification of why it is that the rule of law has, has boned me because they want to frivolously try to litigate best interests of the children. Trivialize this so, for me, please. I've, all, I've already explained to you. Yeah, you trivialized it. You haven't complied with the rules. What, what, <clears throat> the rules are hidden. The rules are privilege. The, the rules are not hidden. They are not privileged. Yes. You chose to be your own attorney. I had to, and choice. And the Supreme Court says you are held to the same standard as an attorney. And the Supreme Court that says nobody shall interfere with parental's rights, the par parents' rights for, the, for their children. Is that correct? Well, and then you are doing that. That's not, that's not an accurate statement. Oh, it's not. Okay. So let me just do this. Parental rights may not be taken away without clear and convincing evidence, due process, and strict scrutiny. Now, you're telling me... That occurred in this case. Look, mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue with you. You have. You just, I'm not trying to argue with decision. you. Objection. Yes. Point of clarification. The decision is... is Unfortunately, Your Honor, objection, point of clarification. Not You're not allowing me to speak and present my case. I'm not trying to argue with you, sir. I'm tr attempting to make a clarification and ask you if you're terminating my parental rights based on this trivial I assumption not, that this is frivolous. There is nothing that terminates you. Well, you're doing that essentially here, my friend. That's, uh, um, you're telling me that I have to go through this whole process again, and we'll do another three years. Sit down and be still. Your Honor, I'm still addressing the court. You sit down and be still, or I will Objection, have the point of clarification. Do you want me to have the bailiff remove you from the courtroom? I don't believe I have to do this. Um, 
Your Honor, are you, I'm I, not. Point of clarification. Are you trying to uh, use like, I, like force to get me to like? I'm trying to I'm, object to clarify. Shut up and listen to me. I'm giving you one opportunity. You sit down and you shut up, or I will have the bailiff arrest you and incarcerate you. What are you, you talking about? For contempt. Why are they going to arrest me for contempt for speaking, for trying to state my case and object to a clarification? I'm trying to make it have an understanding. How, how can sit I sit down? Your Honor, you really going to threaten me with violence because I won't sit down? Get the, get the bailiff. I'm sitting down, Your Honor. Get the bailiff. Jeez. I, well, I guess I got a rip. Hey, I have a writ of habeas corpus just waiting for me for this kind of stuff. You know, this is unlawful. I mean, unfortunately, you're frustrated because this is trivial to you. You've only gotten a little bit of a like a tiny view of the whole perspective. Isn't that true? You, I mean, you are causing a disruption to this court. This whole process is a disruption to a family, which is more important than a court, I'd imagine. Counsel, if you'll submit an appropriate order. I will, Your Honor. This hearing is concluded. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, let's do it. Your Honor, are you going to put me under arrest today? May I? Don't press it. I'm not trying to press it, sir. I'll leave. Are, are you done with him, Your Honor? Yes. Please. Yes, Madam. sir. Oh, easy, Captain. I don't know yet, unfortunately. We'll look forward to seeing you then.